Welcome to the Don Buster. Beneath its snowy mantle, cold and green, the unborn grass lies waiting for its coat to turn to green. The snowbird sings the song he always sings. Tonight, a personal report by the Daily Mirror's special correspondent, John Pilger. Vietnam, 1970, the front line. I hadn't been to Vietnam for three years. The war, after all, is a bore, so why go back? What is there left to say? Surely we've seen it all on telly. But our boredom has not made the war go away, so I've come back for the final act. No blood, no atrocities. Just the rejection of the war by those sent here to fight it. Just the quiet mutiny of the greatest army in history. This is Snuffy, some eight miles from the Cambodian border in a wilderness of jungle and mud controlled by the North Vietnamese and the Viet Cong. Snuffy is a beleaguered fort defended by the 1st Air Cavalry Division. The scene there looks so familiar, like a faded snapshot of another war we wish to forget half a century ago with its trenches and mud and barbed wire and boredom and young men and their puppies. Snuffy is important because it's the end of the line for the grunts. They are the 18-year-old drafted kids, the national servicemen on whom the entire army depends. They are the ones to whom the buck has finally passed, from the president and the pentagon and the career men who catch coals in their air-conditioned command posts. Out of 400,000 American soldiers in Vietnam, only 80,000 fight, and almost all of them are grunts. The grunts in 1970 are a very different kind of American foot soldier. They are mostly from a world unknown to their commanders. They are the graduates of an American rebellion that stemmed from the war they have been sent here to fight. And quietly but massively they have brought that rebellion with them here to Vietnam. For the grunts are unravelling the very fabric of the military. They are growing their hair, wearing love beads, smoking pot, flourishing the V-sign of peace. And some are refusing to fight. The young men you see in this film are not a selected griping minority. I've spoken to hundreds of young soldiers and the rebellion they feel so deeply is everywhere. Stop, uh, spread of communism. I don't want to see communism spread it all over the world. But nothing I can do about it. Just stay and do my time, which I'm going to do. Get, get out of Vietnam, go back to the world. I couldn't see any purpose in the war back home. Mm. I, you know, it never explained to me why we're actually here. And I, you know, I really had nothing against these people. I want to kill them. And you go out in the woods and they'll shoot at you first. You'll see them, you know, they'll shoot you if they get the chance. You have to shoot at them first. It's really bad. I still don't know why I'm here. That's the guy's truth. Three months and I don't know why I'm shooting these people. Today is the day. The grunts are the wheels of the green machine, the name they give the military. The green machine is comic book America with flesh on it. Today is the day for you to let people... A wonderland of heroes and slogans. In the green machine, a grunt doesn't seek out the enemy. He goes hunting for gooks. The green machine plays games like Wandering Soul. Wandering Soul is a tape that has been put out by the Psychological Operations Battalion and Benoit. It's used by the operating divisions and separate brigades to broadcast a rally appeal to the Viet Cong. The tape itself is a rather weird one with the funeral dirge music in the background and a father talking to his children saying he's died on the battlefield and he's trying to encourage his comrades to rally and join the just cause. The Vietnamese people worship the souls of their ancestors, but this wandering soul is very different. It was conceived in an echo chamber by the US Army and is broadcast from a helicopter over jungle where the gooks are supposed to be hiding. Ba đang về với con đây. Tôi đang về với mình đây. 
Nhưng tôi còn có hướng lắm lên này nữa Tôi đã chết rồi mà con bay ơi Tất cả hắn thương Tất cả hắn thương biết gì nào We drop, I'd say, about 800,000 leaflets a day. We tell them what's happened to them in their battles. We killed three of your people yesterday, and they know it. We tell them also that you're going to be killed this, you know, into the future. You could be killed, and why? Why? We ask them to desert their unit, and what will happen to them once they rally, how they will be well treated. Well, actually, it's been pretty slow. So far this month, we've had five. Last month, we only had one. The object of dispersing our leaflets by helicopters they'll take a bunch by hand and throw them out most of the time occasionally uh, trying to get a direct result of a science mission they'll take a whole carton which you'll see and just drop it right out hoping to hit someone Let's have some fun. you've got pride and you're really proud of what you're doing and, and proud of seeing what you have done in the past and this division has lived on a proud heritage. MacArthur said it well. This division is first in almost everything. General George Custerdale was in the uh, cavalry. And uh, now instead of rattling sabers, we have rippling rotor blades. Lifers and grunts. The career men who command the rear, the kids who hold the front. A lifer is a person that wants to make a career out of the Army. That they sit back in air-conditioned rooms and say, OK, you, you, you guys go out there and fight the war. We'll tell you where to go and how to do it. But all they do is sit back there and draw their combat pay for not doing nothing. We just sit back there on their butts. A lifer is someone, that, to me, that stays in the Army 20 or 30 years. And... <laughs> 20 or 30 years, and, and that's just his job. Uh, when, you, when you come in the Army and you're a grunt like us, well, we're just out in the boonies, humping with the big pack and all, uh, fighting, Viet, fighting the Viet Cong and the NVA. Who does the fighting, the grunts or the lifers? The grunts. There are some lifers out there with us, but uh, they don't see too much action on them. Very few. <laughs> the lifers are always, always in the rear trying to run everything out in the field, and the grunts yeah. out there trying to do the best you can. Like, the lifers is a... Uh, say like they're back here and like they say go to this hill and this hill they don't look at the terrain and everything and how rough it is and everything and the grunt and the grunt's the one that has to go through all the, all the hell grunt has to do the fighting yes out on patrol 28 days out in the boonies the green machine jargon for the bush where the indians are days of boredom seconds of terror a mile a day waiting to be shot at waiting to step on a mine boring waiting. On this patrol we hear a chicken and the captain says it may be a Viet Cong chicken. No life in his helicopter can kill that chicken. Only the grunts can kill that chicken and its owner. On this patrol, the medic says to me, hey man, why doesn't TV show how boring this war is? I'm Army Sergeant Roger Clay Ashworth. Have a good day now. The difference between a lifer and a grunt is the lifer is supposed to know the why of it, and the grunt thinks there is no why of it. He's just over here, and it's, uh, we all count it in days. We can almost every one of us tell how many days we have left to do in Vietnam. When you're out on long-range patrol with a sort of new kind of grunt, do you give orders or do you sort of enter into discussions? It's a combination of both. Uh, it's not near as many orders as I thought it would be. The, uh, there's a, an old saying in the United States Army that you, ha you, you don't tell an American soldier, you tell him why. And I didn't believe it as much until I came to Vietnam, and I've had several times when uh, I thought my people were being insubordinate because they wanted to know why or my NCOs out there being insubordinate because they wanted to know why. And maybe because of the emotions at the time, you know, I had to say, you'll do it, damn it, you know, because I say you'll do it. I had to do 